Hey everybody, Stacy M. Gooden here. Thanks again for joining How to Grow Your Brand. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about seven branding mistakes to avoid. Yeah, we all make mistakes, right? It's the inevitable. But the key is, of course, you learn from them, but why not avoid them too? I know I've had my fair share of branding mistakes, things that I look back on and I'm like, what was I thinking doing that? <laughs> So I'm here to save you some time, some energy, and some money as well, because sometimes it'll cost you these mistakes, I'll tell you that much. So without further ado, here are seven branding mistakes to avoid. Hey everybody, again, I'm Stacy Ann Gooden, and welcome to seven branding mistakes to avoid. Now, did you know that there are almost two million blog posts written each day? Yeah, it's a lot. And uh, you can find an up to the minute information and count at World Meters. It's estimated that this number will continue to grow, which can only mean that the amount of blogs will too. Now, some people might argue that it's pointless to even start a blog because there's so much competition out there. But you know, that's not necessarily the case. WordPress is one of the top blog platforms with over 409 million people viewing more than 23.6 billion pages each month. So it's safe to say that blogs are not going anywhere anytime soon. But in order to grow your brand, you have to stay a cut above the rest. Now, blogging offers brands a chance to connect with people, whether you're a parenting blogger offering tips and tricks, or an entrepreneur selling products and services, it's important to showcase your expertise. So having a blog offers you a platform to position yourself as an expert in your field. But let's face it, there's a whole lot of noise in the blogosphere, let me tell you. Even though there are millions of blogs out there, not all of them are effective. In fact, some are dormant. If you don't want to get lost in all the noise, I'm gonna break down some branding mistakes to avoid. Okay, so we're gonna start with number one, being too vague. If your blog isn't clear and concise, you run the risk of keeping your audience unengaged. In fact, you may have a tough time gaining loyal readers. I know, I've, I've been through this. Make sure your blog is clear. You also want to make sure your tagline is precise. Readers should immediately know what they'll get from your site before they even read your post. And this is something that I've dealt with, as I mentioned. Uh, I've gone through a series of different taglines and trying to figure it out and you know what, sometimes it is a little bit of trial and error. You may not get it on the first time. I know I didn't. This is my current tagline right now, is raising children to weather the storm. And the name of my blog is Weather Anchor Mama. And as I've written about and mentioned in other videos that I've done, that it was pretty clear what my blog should be. I'm a weather anchor, I'm a meteorologist, that's what I do for a living. And then I'm a mom. So when I started this blog, I had just gave birth to my daughter not too long ago. And it just made sense to put the two together because in the beginning, it was all about balancing career and motherhood. And that was actually my tagline. And now I've surpassed that and I'm continuing to grow. So now it's more like raising children to weather the storm. And although it's precise, there are some different feels and different things that I write about, but the core of my blog is raising children to weather the storm and helping parents to do the same. Just to give you an example. All right, my next point or the next little tip, not separating yourself from others in your niche. Now, if there's no clear distinction of who you are and what makes you different, you're likely to get lost in the shuffle. For example, when I began blogging, there were a ton of mommy bloggers out there. Many of them had been blogging for years. Now, I was able to make my 
a name for myself by focusing on what I do best. I have a TV background in addition to having a multiracial, multicultural family. So I write a lot about that. So since I'm raising children to weather the storm, a part of raising my children is teaching them about their identity, um, sharing a lot about our culture, our, their American culture, as well as my Jamaican background. So I may share some cool tips on putting together a, a fabulous Jamaican dish or something like that. Um, and it also encourages parents to do the same and lets people kind of inside my window, take a peek inside of what my family is like. Now, whether you're providing your audience with tips on how to style curly biracial hair, um, making science experiments, which is also what we do. We do fun videos with that and sharing Jamaican recipes. I've just managed to stand apart from the rest. So I always tell people, if you're having trouble finding your own unique voice, start by writing down bullet points of yourself. Who are you? What do you do for a living? What do you want people to know about you? And what makes you different? What can people get from your brand? And you know what, I, if you're having trouble with that, it doesn't hurt to maybe ask a friend or a relative, hey, what do you think stands out about me? And sometimes you get really, really good insight just by doing that. Now, the next mistake people often make is focusing too much on making money. I, don't get me wrong, we all want money, right? We all wanna make a lot of it, but Many people start blogs with hopes of turning it into a business, and that's fine. But don't overwhelm your audience with sales funnels. I mean, I for me, that's a turnoff. Whenever I see these sales funnels and it's just like this interwoven, it becomes a maze, and it just gets so confusing, and I miss the whole point. And I don't necessarily want to uh, you know, spend money right off the bat. So before you begin charging people, give them quality content. Let's be real, everybody, we love free stuff. Why not give them valuable information at no charge? Once you've established your audience, then they'll begin to trust you and wouldn't mind buying your products and services. So it's kind of like you don't want to necessarily start Go in a, you know, <laughs> go in a home base, the home plate before you, you know, get your way there. You kind of want to just, you know, in a sense, crawl before you walk, walk before you run, that kind of thing. That's a better analogy. <laughs> okay. Another thing that people tend to not do, they don't provide value. And this is kind of piggybacking off this last tip here. It's important to provide quality information. And I'll admit, I was guilty of this when I started blogging. I used to get calls from family members abroad and emails from viewers requesting to see photos of my baby. So posting pictures on my site was like a no-brainer. But then after a while, I realized that my posts didn't offer any value. That's when I began sharing solutions to parenting dilemmas, you know, like potty training, breastfeeding problems. Uh, and things like that. So my blog has evolved since then, and so has my brand. So don't be afraid of trying new things. You'll eventually find what works for you and what works for your audience. So great solution is just sharing tips and tricks, offering solutions, figure out what your audience wants and deliver the message. And here's just a, a few examples. Now, my daughter and I, we do this fun, like curly hairstyle of the week thing where I just give tips on styling biracial hair. I would get emails all the time from parents like myself who struggle with that. They don't know the kind of products to use, how to go about styling their curly biracial children's hair and things like that. So we came up with these fun video tutorials that makes it so easy. Most of these hairstyles can be done in just a few short minutes because, you know, we don't have a whole lot of time <laughs> to accomplish, <laughs> you know, like these big intricate styles. So we try to make it simple. 
So do what works best for you and what works best for your brand and your audience and just run with it. Now, another mistake we often make, and I know this one's tough, especially if you just have a busy schedule. Um, being inactive on social media, yes, I've, I've been a culprit of that, I'll admit. Now, this is a common mistake that a lot of brands make. If you're a photographer, then you should be active on social media in addition to having a blog. It's a great way to get people to know your business, know who you are, and to also grow your business. There's no need to go crazy signing up for every social media site, though. I just want to say that. Just choose a few that you're comfortable with to start and just work from there. Now, uh, Facebook and Twitter has always been the top social media platforms, but don't forget about Pinterest and Instagram. So you want to consider that as well. Now, choose social media sites that you're comfortable with and then just focus on mastering them. Now, in addition to Facebook and Twitter, uh, there are sites like Google and Pinterest that are really top dogs. And a lot of people don't realize that Pinterest is also a search engine. It's a great resource for looking for information. So if you're, for instance, a food blogger, be sure to pin your recipes. That's a great way to build your audience. Everyone loves a yummy recipe, right? Be sure to create different boards that fall in line within your brand. And also a great little tidbit, join group boards. I mean, that's something that I realize is just huge. So if you're just starting out, you're not familiar with Pinterest, reach out to some other top pinners out there and say, hey, take a look at my blog, take a look at my content. I would love to be able to share on your board. Will that be cool with you? And believe it or not, a lot of people would say, hey, yeah, come on board. So it's just a matter of pinning, stylizing your pins accordingly. If you notice, uh, a lot of these um, pins here, they have these great little thumbnails. And normally, they're so they should be vertical. I mean, it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye and adding text is so important and mixing it up a little bit. And of course, we know that food is very visual, but if you are not a food blogger, like say if you're into photography or something like that and you want to share photography tips, you could put post a, a cool picture of, I don't know, you know, kid with a dog or something like that, tips for taking photos with your kids and pets together or something like that and start with that and you'll see how much people will gravitate towards that and how much your your business will grow as a result so basically cater it to your business and uh, join these group boards and that you'll see a huge difference I know I have with our curly hairstyles another great um, Another great outlet that people are unaware of is Periscope. I know live video, live streaming is huge right now. Facebook is also a great way. As a matter of fact, Facebook is probably more popular than Periscope. Uh, but whatever you decide, take advantage of it and share that with your audience. And you'll find that um, you'll see a difference. For me, Periscope was a great way to grow my audience in a different light. Uh, I remember it coming into play not too long ago, maybe in 2014, I believe, around March 2014 or 2015. Please don't quote me on that. But uh, the point is, the point is, is that it opened me up to a whole new audience that I didn't know before. It positioned me in a, in a way that Rather than having my audience, which was mostly in the United States, um, some Caribbean and a little bit of uh, UK, I was opening, being opened up to a whole new, like broad audience. It became worldwide. So I found that I was meeting people all over the world. And to expose your, your brand to that only helps you and only grows your, your brand and your business. So just keep that in mind as well. Don't sell yourself short. If you're not comfortable with Periscope, there is a Facebook 
there is Snapchat, there's other outlets that are also um, something that you can take advantage of. Another thing that people tend to not do is be consistent. And I know this is tough. I mean, one of the one of the tips that I got when I started blogging is to try and post the same day each week. If you're going to post, like, say, twice a week, have it be those same two days, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Friday, or something like that, so people can look forward to getting your posts. I know that's a little tough, but I say this, because you know what, I'm not married to that. I mean, there may be one day that I may post on Monday, and then the next week I may post on a Tuesday, but it's always within that range. Like people know, okay, I'm going to head to weatherankamama.com because I know there's something that comes out early in the week and I know she refreshes and comes out with something later in the week. And uh, we also do like a video on the weekend. So people kind of get the idea that we post at the beginning of the week, at the end of the week, and then we update our YouTube channel. So it's important to just be consistent, be as consistent as you possibly can with the time you're given. And that's a huge mistake. I know some people, for instance, they'll post Monday and then like don't post again for like a couple weeks. That is something you don't want to do. So again, you don't want you don't blog every single day. We don't have time for that necessarily, but it's perfectly fine to blog five days a week or two days a week. As long as you're consistent blogging. You can always do social media shares and you can repost old posts just to make up for it. This is my last little tip here. Um, this is a huge mistake that many of us, we, we make. And I certainly have issues despite being in front of the camera all the time. I mean, it's what I do for a living. So people would say, hey, yeah, you should be fine with this, right? No, not necessarily. Uh, but a lot of people, they don't provide video content. As you know, video has become the number one way to communicate in this social media world that we're living in right now. So it's, it's no surprise that, that not everyone is comfortable in front of the camera. But video content, it's going to continue to dominate, okay? Now... This is how it's been for the past couple of years or so. With the introduction of Periscope, which just mentioned, Facebook Live, Snapchat, brands are tapping into their prospective markets and growing their brand. Now, by this year alone, video will account for 69% of all consumer internet traffic. That is according to Cisco. It's a good idea to start making videos, guys, if you don't already. And if you are afraid of being in front of the camera, I know I don't always look camera ready, consider getting someone who can promote your brand. I mean, hey, that's what we do. I mean, there are times when I don't feel like being in front of the camera. So I got the next best thing, my kids. So whether my daughter is making these fun craft tutorials or how to science videos or we're doing fun curly hairstyles or something like that or I may have my son play with his toys we just make it a point to get in front of the camera and share that content I, I've noticed that just our brand alone has just continued to grow and we've all made branding mistakes don't get me wrong but it's important to just grow from them when it comes to growing your brand, being focused and knowing your goal is the key to becoming successful. So this pretty much concludes this e-course. Uh, if you have any additional questions or maybe there's something I didn't cover, you can feel free to email me at stacyann at weatherankamama.com. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Of course, I'm still on Periscope. Uh, so please reach out to me and... Um, Follow me just to get updates on what's been going on. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great one. Bye.